Hello everyone, welcome to PSM TV. We would like to welcome you all to yet another uh, lesson that we are going to dig deep into the Word of God and look at what God wants. Today, without wasting much of your time, our lesson is called the Kingdom, the Equalizer. Now, I was looking for ways to put on to what does it mean to have the Kingdom as the Equalizer. but in, in in my native language it's the equalizer means my anzanise so I, I i couldn't find a good word for for ndevele for people who speak ndevele so that they understand the kingdom being the equalizer some, sometimes we can call it a consonance it's how god is going to consolidate the state of the world now it seems uh, a hard done when we look at how the Christian world is today. So the Christian world is divided into multiple sects, right? Each believing one thing, each believing the other thing. But what we want to look at is how is then God going to, to, to save people? I, I'll tell you this, for a fact we know as multiple uh, sections there are in the Christian world, in each section, we believe that there is uh, the people of God in each and every section. There is no particular one group that's going to be saved and the other, the whole lot going to be lo lost. But we know that in each section, right, in each sect of that of the, the Christian uh, uh, sections, there is a good people, people who are dear to the will of God, who do somehow, they may be uh, 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 misfortuned to be in that group, but they have a good character that God uh, sees them as his own. But how is then God is going to, to, to take them? And is, are they going to leave this other church and come to your church? Or leave my church and come to your church. We want to see how is God going to do that in this in this in this last last uh, uh, section of of the Christian church. But we, we would really love to put home that every church there is a good person. Every church that is, there is there is a, a person that is going to be saved. That that's that's for effect. Every church that we have is going to have some candidates for the kingdom. But where they are, how are they going to be saved where they are? So that's why today we want to look at the kingdom being the equalizer. Now, where, where am I getting to? We are getting there from what we know, from what happened in Noah's day. Not everyone built uh, 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 Noah's uh, uh, ark, but... Get that act was the equalizer out together everyone who was of this other faith or that other faith believing that or not believing that they had one thing god put for them so that they enter into his rest we know it was the ark so today we want to know is the kingdom the equalizer as we are, are trying to say so the kingdom of god is going to be set and that's what we believe it's going to be set here on earth and every other denomination yeah they have to believe in going into the kingdom just as what happened in noah's day the ark was built and regardless of whichever faith you were coming from you were to go into the ark so the ark was just like an equalizer of all the faiths right regardless of what you believed the final uh, a jump was to get into the ark. If you failed to do that, then that was uh, 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 your, your doomsday. But we want to know, in our time, is the kingdom being the equalizer that each and every faith, from Ephesians 4, we know that, let me read it, in Ephesians 4 verse, from this uh, 4, it says, there is one body, and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of, of your calling. So we know there's one what? There's one body, one spirit, 
one hope of your calling. So the call is the same thing. It's the same in everyone. So the call that is going to come for us to go into the kingdom should be the same. It shouldn't be different, right? And there's one Lord, there's one faith, there's one baptism, one God, Father of all. This is Ephesians. Paul is, is, is writing to the Ephesians. As multitude as we are, as divided as the Christendom is, there is one God, there is one faith, there is one calling, there is one baptism, there is one God. So everything is one. So we should be having one faith, one doctrine, one hope of our calling. But that time, it is, uh, it is a time where there is a consonance. There is an equalizer that is going to make sure all the faiths, regardless of where you belong to, because people belong to certain uh, uh, different organizations. And we know that in each and every denomination, there is a good and bad. And the good are the candidates for the kingdom. And God is saying, for him to, 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 to take them, he has to put something that will equalize all the faiths out together. Right. So there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all, through all, and in you all. So God is one. So we should be one. Now, we want to look at how did we become different and then we will then look at how is god going to do the equalizing the consolation of of all our faiths are we together so our first verse is coming from uh, um, john 21 verse 20. john 21 verse 20. yeah then peter telling about seeth the disciple whom jesus loved following which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Mm -hmm. Peter seeing him said to Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Right. Well, why did I choose this verse? Because we know like this is the first section of the church where we have the, the separation into two churches, right? Before... If you know very well, if you read your Bible, you know the Old Testament church was just one church. There was no divisions like we, we have now. But now we have the Christian church coming from the Jewish church now. All together. Now Christ is about to go to heaven, right? And he's, he has got Peter. And he's asking Peter, do you love me? Do you love me? Three times. But Peter now is focusing on John. The disciple whom God, whom Jesus loved, right? And the, this disciple. So what shall this John do? Do you, do you get it? Yes. Now, Christ is saying, "What is that to do with thee?" Right? And what does he say again? Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. "If I will tarry, if sorry, Jesus said unto him, right? If I will that he tarry till I come." So Jesus say, "If I will, if it, if I will." Right, if he would, if it was to go by Jesus' wish, he would like John to tarry till he come, so he will never die. Basically, right? Go down. What is that to thee? Uh -huh. Follow thou me. Right. Then went this saying abroad among the brethren that 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 disciple should not die. So among them, they said, "Oh, this disciple is no longer going to die," because Christ said that. Are we together? Okay, go, go down. Yet Jesus said, said un, not unto him, ye shall not die. Right. But if I will that ye turn till I come, right. what is that to thee? Right. This? This is the disciple which testified of these things and wrote these things. And we know that his testimony is true. Do you see? So John, among all the people... They are saying his testimony we know is is true because he was the one that is closer to to Christ. Are we together? Yes. Go to finish what verse twenty-five. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written everyone, 
I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Together. Amen. So John, why am I bringing John in this? Now, John is the last disciple. We know he lived until AD 90 something. He watched the destruction of Jerusalem in AD 70. AD 90 something, he was still alive. Now, he is the one who wrote First John, Second John, all the books about John, right? The first and Second John are we together. And he is the one who wrote the book of Revelation as well. Are we together? Yes. Now, so he is the last of the Christian church that was with Christ. Right? Among the pioneers that were, with, were that were with Christ, he is the last. So, we would like to see, because he was at the eye of Patmos when he wrote Revelation, now he is asking God, what is the end? Because this Christian church was supposed to go into the kingdom of God. That's what they believed. Because God, when Christ went in, he said, I'm coming, tarry a little while, then I come and get you to my father's kingdom. But now, he is seeing all the disciples are being killed. They, the, the, the church is being uh, invaded by the pagans. So he's asking, oh, what is the next step? What for the church? What is the next step? It looks like everything is what is vanishing. The church is being banished and there's no true followers of God. So what is the next step? That's what we want to know. Uh, Revelation 1 verse 11. Revelations 1 verse 11. Saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, unto Simna, unto Pergamos, unto Thyatra, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodos. Right. So, instead, I would together, if, if, if I want you to take note of this, uh, the Jewish church was one church. Now they separated with the Christian church. But instead, John is worried. What is the next step in, in the church? Are we together? But Christ is, say, is revealing to John that instead of diminishing, there are yet seven more churches to come after thee. But these seven, church, seven churches, they each are represented by a candlestick. You all know this. If you go to Revelation, they each are represented by a candlestick, which means there is in each a church a little truth, 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 and to Laodicea. Are we together? So what is that in our, in our time? It means in each church where there are members, we know that they have got a little truth, that they believe on and that what that's what is what is making them convocate and being who they they are they are are, 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 are seen by the truth they believe out together and most of this truth is actually the truth it's not fables out together it's actually what the truth but now i want you to read uh acts of the apostles uh five Eight, five. Acts of the Apostles, page 585. The names of the seven churches are symbolic of the church in different periods of the Christian era. Right. The number seven indicates completeness. Right. And is symbolic of the fact that the messages extend to the end of time. Right. While the symbols used reveal the condition of the church at different periods in the history of the world are we together now so when john is being shown seven church ages out together this shows that these churches are to extend to the end of time right when they extend to the end of time the number seven the fact that they are seven it means it, it denotes the whole christian job so there's no church that is uh, left behind right so all churches are in this category. I know some people say our church is the church of God and Peter was the one who was given these keys. No, you are under the same umbrella of these seven churches. So yours can be Laodicea, the other could be uh, 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 Philadelphia, Smyrna, uh, Pergamos, whatever. 
Ephesus, whatever. It is your church. These churches are in one bowel. Do not say, oh, ours is because of whatever. No, no. It, it, it may be because they are extending to the end of time. Yours may be coming, the last, like Laodicea is the last of the seven churches. The time Laodicea came, it is the, it's a Greek word, which means Laodicea, means a church declaring judgment. Out together. So when that church comes into play, they might think that they are the last church and they are the perfect one. No. All these churches have a candlestick which means they are having a particular truth okay so uh, i want you to remember uh, to to jump on isaiah 4 verse 1 isaiah 4 verse 1 and in that day seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our what? Our reproach. Do you see now, these seven women are the seven churches. Right? Yes. A, a, a lot of people have used this verse to have polygamy, but it doesn't mean that. The, the, in the Bible, the woman in prophecy means a change. So, when it say seven women shall take hold of one man saying we will eat our own bread and wear our own apparel only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach we see now these seven churches when they started they started on a good platform but now whenever there's a reformation god is is, is someone who sees things before they happen so you might say so why did not god say one church no he knew they are going to reject that's why he's called them seven churches. Now, Isaiah was given the same vision. Now, these women, when they start, they are good, good people. But as they progress, what do they do? They want to eat their own bread, not Christ's bread. They want to wear their own what? Apparel. Okay. The only thing they want from Christ is the name, which is Christians. They don't want to any other thing, which is what is happening in our churches. We just want the name Christian. We don't want the sanctity of living a Christian life. Are we together? So now, where are we getting this? Where are we getting to? I want you to read uh, GC Great Controversy 382.3, which says, Furthermore, GC 382.3. Furthermore, in the 18th chapter of, of the Revelation, in a message which is yet future, the people of God are called upon to come out of Babylon. According to this scripture, many of God's people must still be in Babylon. Mm -hmm. And in what religious bodies are the greater part of the followers of Christ now to be found? Right. Are we together? I, I, want, I like this one. It's saying, furthermore, in the chapter of Revelation 18, we see people are being called, come out of Babylon so that you do not partake of your what? of your plugs are we together so the, the writer is saying so where are god's people at that time when they, this call is come is, call is 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 going on which says come out of babylon so where are god's people let's let's hear without doubt without doubt in the various churches professing the protestant faith are we together in the various churches so when revelation is calling people they will be in various what Churches. churches professing protestant faith right i want you to go down why why are they now if they are churches surely they should be called out as coming from babylon out together mm -hmm. but why is now the scripture calling them babylon if if they are god's people why are they being called come out of babylon when he say come out of the church their churches uh -huh. let's go at the time of their rise at the time of their rise these churches took a noble stand for god and the truth they took a noble stand for god and the truth uh -huh. and his blessing was with them and the blessing of god was with them yes mm -hmm. but they fell by the same desire which was the curse and ruin of israel right the desire of imitating the practices 
and cutting the friendship of the ungodly. Are we together? Do we remember what made the people who killed Christ? Israelites. The church at that time. Are we together? Who killed Christ is the church. No wonder why Christ found home in the in the in the halots, in the in the in the in the thieves. In why? Because the church denied Christ. Why did they deny Christ? Because they unite with the world. When they unite with the world and start practicing the practices of the world, then they have no no flavor. For the things of God, how together? So when one thing you should know, the people who crucified Christ were not drunkards, were not prostitutes, were not uh, all these people that we see. They were people who were worshiping God, and the verse says in Luke, many of them believed in Christ, but they did not confess Him. Why? Because they were afraid to be thrown out of the church. Are we together? So, what the, the, the church, these churches, they started on a noble stand. When you say, oh, my church is this, it was a noble idea. But Satan used that idea that whenever God is going to talk anything more, now we say, it's not from my churches. How many people we know you know who don't belong to your church. How many preachers whom you know who don't belong? Have you ever listened to someone who is not from your church? No. A, a lot of people who never listen, they will tell you our church is the perfect one. We don't have to listen to these people. We don't have to listen to that. We don't have to listen because our church is the perfect one. No. That's the, how devil is, is managed to group these churches. Yeah. So that they believe that they're going somewhere when actually they are not. But God, in his mercy, is saying, I'll send a, a call to call these people from whatever denomination. You, don't tell me ours is perfect. There is going to be a call. And when you don't heed that call, then it is a doomsday for you. Out together. So that is exactly what happened in Noah's day. He just built an ark and the call was for everyone who wanted, even the dogs, even the, 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 the animals went in. Yeah? The animals went in. Don't tell me the animals were, were perfect. They didn't commit adultery they did, like what we think. No, they heeded the call. And when that call came, they were perfectly positioned to go into the ark. Are we together? And the people with all their, their, their IQs, they said, no, don't go into the, don't, don't. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a fallacy, it's a, it's a satanic, it's a whatever. We cannot fit all of us into there. But that was the call that was coming to what? To save them. Are we together? So we know now, Isaiah 4, verse 1 said, In that day, seven women shall take hold of who? Of one man, saying, We'll eat our own bread, we will what? Wear our own apparel, only let us be called by thy name. Which means the whole seven churches that were shown John, until the end of time, they will just, it's not seven, as in literal seven churches, like one, two, three, four. It means the whole Christendom. That's what they are saying. They want Christ's name only. But what they eat, they eat the app, or whatever. Oh, this is our, our books we need to eat. You don't have to eat something out, anything outside this. Oh, you don't have to. Uh, some of them, I've seen people, some churches, they do that. Uh, they actually give uh, 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 preachers what to preach on, on their day of worship. You have to preach this. So the verses are just aligned for them to preach. So do you see, it's what they want you to, to eat. How, how do you know? If I pray, God can tell me what to say. But they, they, they have got specific verses. This week you have to say this. Next week you have to say that. So they have their what? Their own food which is not the food of Christ. And they have got their own. And if you, if you would read, you see these churches, they have said, away with the gifts and we want creeds. So all these churches are united by what? By different creeds they have put on. Different creeds in, in, their, uh, uh, in their churches. So as we go on, read G 
Great Control Vest 385, 386, please. Okay. Great Control Vest 386. A profession of religion has become popular with the world. Mm -hmm. Rulers, politicians, lawyers, doctors, merchants join the church as means of securing the respect and confidence of society mm -hmm. and advancing their own worldly interests. Right. Uh -huh. Thus, they seek to cover all their unrighteous transactions under a profession of Christianity. The various religious bodies, reinforced by the work and influence of these baptized worldlings, mm -hmm. make a still higher bid for popularity and patronage. Uh -huh. Splendid churches, embellished in the most e extravagant manner, mm -hmm. are erected on popular avenues. The worshippers array themselves in costly and fashionable attire. A high salary is paid for a talented minister to entertain and attract people. Mm -hmm. His sermons must not touch popular scenes, but be made smooth and pleasing for fashionable ears. Thus, fashionable sinners are enrolled on the church records, and fashionable sins are concealed under a pretense of godliness. Are you together? They are concealed under a pretense of what? Of godliness. Why? Because when you, when the churches, they love people who have got money, but with with that, with that everything they have, they bring also their what? Their creeds. They bring also their what? Their, 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 their policies. And you will see that's how the churches are what are being drained away into into the unpopular avenues. Now I want you to read Great Controversy, uh, verse three eight three, paragraph one. Let's hear what he says. JC three eight three point one. Mm -hmm. And the term Babylon confusion may be appropriately applied to these bodies, all professing to derive their doctrines from the Bible yet divided into almost innumerable sects with widely conflicting creeds and theories. How together? So they all are saying we are deriving all our what? Our, 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 our doctrines from the Bible. But we, they have got differently wide conflicting what? Creeds and theories. So every church you go into, you, you, you see this, you can go to your own church. I will go to mine and check. Do they have creeds? So what are the creeds? These are policies that we will run our church this way. Out together. We will run our church this way. Every day there is a formal. Yeah? They do things formally. Like uh, today we will, we will do this. Tomorrow we will do this. And it, it doesn't have to change. If it has to be changed, then you have to go through a process of applying for another creed to change the other creed. No, that's not what God is. Our creed is what is the Bible. Whatever the Bible says, that's our creed. Not human theories. Or oh, every Sabbath you do this in the morning, in the afternoon. In the... Those are creeds. They are not derived from the Bible. Go to the Asian people and see whatever they did. The reason why they, they had one church, they never took creeds from anyone. They went with the Bible and the Bible only. That's why they were the only church that he, that the only section of the church that had one church throughout. Ours have got numerous sections of divisions. This church, if you derive them, they are coming from another church, from another, and there are multitude of churches all together. But now, what is God saying? Uh, he is saying here, uh, uh, they are rightfully termed Babylon. Why? Because they've got, they are, they are uh, uh, saying, they are deriving their, their doctrines from what? From the Bible. But they are so conflicting. As we see, confusion in the tower of what of babel out together that's why god is calling them all these churches they are what babylon and you may say oh our church is uh, is not babylon no every church is babylon and there is going to be what a call to come out of babylon and if you don't read and say oh that call does not mean us because we are not that call will surpass you because it is calling the people of god into into a a marvelous light. I was, I was together. Now, um, 
As we go, I want you to oh, read Isaiah 16. For behold, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth mm -hmm. and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, uh -huh. and his glory shall be seen upon thee. All together, the glory of God shall be upon thee. Why? Because the darkness shall cover the what? The earth. Are we at that period? A lot of people think, oh, we are we are we are spiritual and the things are still going on as perfect as God intended. No. The the verses say there is going to be darkness that will cover the whole earth. And that darkness, when it covers the whole earth, what happens? Gross darkness to the people. So the people will be so in gross darkness. They may think they are worshipping God, but they are in gross darkness. Are we together? Uh -huh. Verse 3. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to thy brightness of thy rising. All together. When you arise, then the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brighten, brightness of thy rising. All together. So, what are we? We are looking at a time when the light of God is what is going throughout the whole earth. Right? Uh, I want you to jump to Isaiah 64, verse uh, 54, sorry. Isaiah 54, verse 1. Verse 1. Yes. Sing, O barren, thou that, thou that didst not bear, break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou that thou didst not travel with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, said the Lord. Right. Uh, there's something that we need to, to learn here. Now, <clears throat> We are saying, our topic is saying, the kingdom, the equalizer, right? But what do we have? We have uh, uh, the eighth woman that is being said here. He's saying, sing, O barren, thou didst not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, thou thou did not travel with child. For more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife saith the Lord. Now, when Christ, when all these churches started, you know, we said, he said these seven churches, there's going to be a call that is going to, to take these people away out of their denominations because they are having a, a, a black surface that is, not, that is not reflecting the light of God out together. Now, what is God saying? But there is, where are they going? They should go to another woman, right? So this woman is what we should learn. Because out of the seven women, God is saying they are eating their own bread. Huh? They, are, they, are, they are putting their own apparel. But there is this woman whom God is saying, uh, sing or barren. So this woman is what is barren. It's, it's not like these seven churches who are filled millions and millions of people. But this woman, we are saying, she is what? She is barren. So who is this woman? Let's, let's read the verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent. Now, this woman, God is saying, enlarge the place of thy tent. All together, right? And let them stretch forth the curtains of their habitation. Uh -huh. Spare not, lengthen thy cords. And strengthen thy stakes. Now, this woman now is being depicted as a tabernacle where you have to, 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 to spread the curtains all together. Mm -hmm. Spread the curtains, but the, this woman is buried. Spread the curtains, do this and do that. Now, uh, verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Do you understand? This woman is saying she, she will inherit all the Gentiles. They will come to her. Uh -huh. Fear not, uh -huh. for thou shalt not be ashamed. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth, uh -huh. and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. Right. Uh -huh. Verse 5. For thy maker is thine husband. Uh -huh. The Lord of hosts is his name. So we know this woman now, the seven are saying we just want your what? Mm -hmm. Your name. 
out together. But this eighth woman that we are giving, she is barren, but God is saying, be happy, rejoice, right? We will see which woman is, is being saved by, by uh, the scripture. But I, I want you to notice there, it say, thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, the God of the whole earth shall he be called. So this, this woman that we see now, whom God is saying, I'm your husband. Eh? This woman is where we should go to. Because this woman is actually married to Christ, to the Lord. These seven women that we wanted or that we, we, we break about, or they are not going to watch sink, they are going to this way, whatever. These seven women, they will just take hold. Do you understand? Do you, do you hear that? They are just taking hold of Christ. Right? But they are not married. But this woman, the Bible has put a stamp. Thine husband is the Lord. He shall be called what? The God of the whole earth. For the Lord, verse 6. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit. Right. But one thing we should know. This eighth woman is forsaken. That's one thing. Mm -hmm. Grieved in spirit. And a wife of? Youth. A wife of youth. Which means when Christ started this whole earth, that is the wife of God. Are we together? So it's not someone who started. I've seen people say, oh, our church is started from Eden, from Eden. No, this is the woman who started from Eden to Eden. Are we together? Uh -huh. And a wife of you, when thou was refused, say thy God. But we know one thing. This woman is refused. I I'm breaking it a little bit so that it makes sense. You will read another verse which says, which will show us what we are saying okay go ahead for a small moment have i forsaken thee uh -huh. a small with... moment have i forsaken thee that's god uh -huh. but with great mercies will i gather thee right uh -huh. in the natural i hid my face from thee for a moment right but with everlasting kindness will i have mercy on thee say the lord thy redeemer right so we see this woman god is saying i have hid thy face my face from thee for a little moment not for a long time for a little moment but now what what is going to happen uh, i will have mercy on thee the lord thy thy redeemer this the next verse for this is as the waters of noah unto me uh -huh. for as i have sworn that the waters of noah should no more go over the earth so have i sworn that i would not be wroth with thee nor rebuke thee. Are we together? Now, God is bringing the same issue that we started with, the issue of Noah. He is saying, this woman is like the days of Noah. Are we together? Mm -hmm. What happened in the days of Noah? He asked everyone, and he was wroth with the people of that time. Are we together? And he caused them to be consumed. But now, he's saying, I will not do that. Why? I have so I have sworn that I will not be wrath with thee nor rebuke thee uh -huh. i want you to read the same verse now to know what which woman is this i know a lot of people will think oh so which church because we have seen all this this church these seven churches from the one that uh, martin luther started uh, to the last one which is the laodosia these are the seven women right but now we want to know which is this seven the eighth women that is being talked of uh, good news Bible on, on the same verse Isaiah 54 verse 1 Isaiah 54 verse 1 uh -huh. Jerusalem you have been like a childless woman but now you can sing and shout for joy now you will have more children uh, 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 wait, wait 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 now it's getting clearer when 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 the Bible was saying sing forth cry loud you that barren Oh, you barren. Do you see who, who, who is barren? Yes. It's Jerusalem. Huh? Jerusalem, a helpless city, 
with no one to comfort. I will rebuild your foundations with precious stones. So when God is saying, thou barren, he is seeing Jerusalem as the woman who is what? Who is barren. But God is saying, sing. Yeah? Sing. Although you are barren, sing. Right? Uh -huh. I will build towers, your towers, with rubies. Your gates with stones that glow like fire. And the wall round with jewels. Uh -huh. I myself will teach your people and give them prosperity and peace. Uh -huh. Justice and right will make you strong. You will be safe from oppression and terror. We want to read in uh, like we see now that who was told rejoice all by it is Jerusalem. Right? We want to see if Paul uh, in Galatians says the same thing. I want you to read Galatians 4 verse 27. Verse 27. Galatians 4 verse 27. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Right. Do you see where Paul is saying, Rejoice, but he is talking of something. I want you to read verse 24 as we go down. Now, we, we know Isaiah right 54 is talking of jerusalem being called to rejoice now paul is saying the same thing but we want to see where paul is putting uh, uh, this woman okay let's go galatians 4 verse 24 verse 24 which things are an allegory <sighs> which things are an allegory is starting from abraham having two wives one sarah and another her guy all together mm -hmm. and they bear what one a son each out together, say Abraham had two what two wives and two sons, and the Bible is calling this an allegory. It's like a parable. There is more to it, not just uh, uh, exactly what it, it is. It, it is okay. Let's go. Which things are an allegory? For these are the two covenants: the one from the Mount Sinai, which generates to bondage, which is Aga. Mm -hmm. For this Aga is Mount Sinai in Arabia. And answer it to Jerusalem, which is now, and is in bondage with her children. Right. But Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Uh -huh. For it is written, Rejoice thou, barren, that bearest not. Break forth and cry, thou that travelest not. For the desolate had many more children than she which had an husband. Are we together? So, we are seeing an allegory here, brethren where Paul is saying rejoice thou barren is Jerusalem but he's saying Jerusalem which is who which is above is free and is the mother of us all which means she's a woman I would together she's a mother of us all but why is she a mother of us all but at the same time she's, she's called barren how together, which means there's something that is happening which we want to 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 note. I want you to read Isaiah 49. Isaiah 49, verse 8, uh, verse 14. Isaiah 49, verse 14. Uh -huh. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. And my Lord has forgotten me. Do you understand? So Zion is saying, my Lord has forsaken me. She is the mother of us all, but she is called barren. Why is she barren? Because no one is talking about Zion. No one is interested about Jerusalem. She is the mother of us all, but she is what? She is barren. This eighth woman, we are still sting clinging to our seven women who are just holding Christ. But they are not married to Christ. Who is married to Christ? This woman who is saying, Oh, you have forsaken me. You have not given me child. Out together. I have no children. But she is the mother of us all. We want to see Isaiah saying, Let's go. Verse 15. Verse 15, yes. Can a woman forget her suckling child? Mm -hmm. That she should not have compassion on the son of her womb. Yeah, they may forget 
yet will I not forget thee. God will never forget Jerusalem. If you if you remember the the, the, the topic on 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 the new moon, it said uh, 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 the Lord is jealous, and if there is messes that he, that can come upon us as a people, is the messes to comfort Jerusalem. I was saying to comfort who Jerusalem. So he's saying this eighth woman, God is going to comfort her. Now I want you to read verse verse eighteen. Verse eighteen. Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. Do you understand? Now God is saying, she's crying. I'm barren. I'm, I'm I've not yet child who comes to me and like me as a mother, because I'm the mother of us all, of everything. And and Christ is saying, no, look around. Oh, if you start on verse seventeen. Verse seventeen. Thy children shall make haste, thy destroyers, and they that made thee waste shall go forth for of thee. Right. Thy destroyers who have made thee what? West. There are people who are in the habit of saying, Jerusalem, you should not go like, uh, 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 what is his name? Uh, uh, Jeroboam. Do not go to Jerusalem. Do not do this. Do not do that. Uh, Jerusalem is, is, it was see, left by the Lord. Yes. For a time, the Lord has said it. Uh, uh, and God said, uh, I have left the, thy house as a habitation of devils. No. God did that for a what? For a time. But now, God is saying, I've shown mercies. And Jerusalem is crying, where are my children? God is saying, look, I've removed. That time will come when God is going to remove every person who is fighting against Jerusalem. Uh, the mother of us all. Uh -huh. And God is saying, lift up thine eyes round about. Let's go. Lift up thine eyes round about, and behold, all these gather themselves together and come to thee. Uh -huh. As I live, say the Lord, thou shalt surely clothe thee with them all, uh -huh. as with an ornament, and bind them on thee, as a bride doeth. Do you understand? So God is making this church, this woman, to have because the Paul say in in Galatians uh, four, rejoice thou barren, because you've got many more children than those who have a husband. Why is God saying she has many more women uh, children? Because these children are going to come from. I, I want you to go up on that on that verse uh, on that chapter uh, from verse verse twelve. Behold, these shall come from af from far, and lo, these from the north and from the west, and these from the land of Sinim. Do you understand? They are coming from afar. So, what, what when we say the kingdom of God is going to be what the equalizer, everyone will be going to who to the kingdom. Yeah, regardless of what faith you are coming from, you have to go to what. To the kingdom regardless of the people who are trying to convince you not to go god is saying you have to what you have to go i uh have -huh. i want you to read verse 20. verse 20. Uh -huh. the children which thou shalt have after thou hast lost the other shall say again in their tears in their in thine ears the place is too straight for me Give place to me that I may dwell. Uh -huh. Then, then shalt thou say in thine heart, Who hath begotten me these? Who hath begotten me? Because she is buried. She is not. She say, Who hath begotten me these? Uh huh. Seeing, seeing I have lost my children and am desolate, a captive and removing to to and fro. Do you understand? A captive removing to and fro. Who has begotten me these? Because the the children that she had were once upon all Mount Zion in Jerusalem. But these children have all been dispersed. That's why James 1 verse 1. What does it say? It says, James. Let me read it. James 1 verse 1. It says, uh, it says James, a servant of, of, the, of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered are abroad. 
Do you understand? So she, this woman had 12 tribes of children. And James is confirming they are what? They are scattered abroad. Now, what, when, when she is seeing, what is she seeing? She is seeing people coming from the north, from the west, from the land of Sinim. Yeah? And she's saying, huh, who has begotten me this? I want you to hear the answer. Uh -huh. Who has begotten me this? Verse 21. Verse 21. Okay. Seeing I've lost my children and am desolate, a captive and removing to and fro, and who had brought up these? Behold, I was left alone. These, where had they been? But where, where have they been? Where did they come from? Are we together? Yes, go ahead. Verse 22. Verse 22. That said the Lord God, Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentiles, and set up my standard to the people, and they shall bring thy sons in their arms, and thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. Are we together? Has this thing ever happened? No. The Gentiles going to Mount Zion with the Jews. Oh, yeah. As one great company. Yeah? Do you see it's the same thing that happened in Noah's day? But in Noah's day, it's just the animals. It was unfortunate. But the people were supposed to gather from every corner upon the earth to prepare and get into what? Into the ark. But that did not happen. And God is saying, in our time, I will have mercy upon the people. What they have to do is to listen to the voice of God and gather themselves. That's why the quote that we read earlier on, it says, when the message of Revelation 14 comes, yeah, Revelation 18, calling the people out of Babylon, they are going to be coming from all the churches, various churches where they are. So if you are in your church, know that, look for this call that is going to come because it is going to get you to the heavenly mother, who is the mother of us all out together uh -huh. and kings shall be thy nursing fathers right and their queens thy nursing mothers they shall bow down to thee with their face toward the earth uh -huh. and lick up the dust of thy feet and thou shalt know that i am the lord for they shall not be ashamed that wait for me verse 24 shall the prey be taken from the mighty or the lawful captive delivered. Uh -huh. But but that said the Lord, even the captives of the mighty the people shall be taken away. Who are captives to the mighty men? You know when the mighty men say, yeah, "Our church is the the best church in the whole world." To be the church of God, to be God is saying, "I will take from them the mighty men that we think they are mighty." Uh -huh. And the prey of the terrible shall be delivered. The prey. Of the terrible shall be delivered for for I will contend with him that contended with thee, and I will save thy children. Do you see, God is going to save everyone from every particular church that says, I just want to hold on to Christ, but I don't want to be married. Because there is the mother who is the heavenly Jerusalem, the Jerusalem, Mount Zion. That's why 144,000 in Revelation 14 are seen standing on Mount Zion. Out together. Uh -huh. Verse 26. Verse 26. And I will feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh. Those that oppress thee, yeah, that took your children, I will feed them with their own flesh. And they shall be drunken with their own blood. Uh -huh. As with sweet wine and all flesh shall know that I, the Lord, am thy Savior and thy Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. The mighty one of Jacob. Verse 26. He said, I'll feed them that oppress thee with their own flesh, and they shall be drunken with their own blood, and with sweet wine, and all flesh shall know that I am, I, the Lord, am the Savior and the Redeemer of the mighty one. So, we will see, in the last day, in these last days, those who are oppressing God's people and are making sure that uh, Jerusalem remains barren, this earth woman remains barren, God is going to deal with them mightily that they will know that God means exactly what he means when he put, has put it in, in his word. So as we're just going to round out some of the verses just to make sure we are in, 
in, in, in line with what we are saying. Shall we read Isaiah 6, 52? Isaiah 52, where it says, Awake, awake, put on thy strength. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth they shall no more come into thee, the uncircumcised and the unclean. Do you understand? Why is Jerusalem be called awake, awake, put on thy strength? Now we see this is, these are the people who are called awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Jerusalem. So if you are a candidate of Jerusalem, yeah, God is calling you to awake and put on thy, thy strength. Or Jerusalem, not to put the the, the 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 garments from your seven women who are just holding on to Christ. Yeah, uh, you are supposed to put the beautiful garments of Jerusalem. Let's go. Uh huh. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake thyself from the dust. Arise and sit down. Sit down. O Jerusalem, loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. From the bands of thy neck, from the men wrought uh, oppression. We see all the people are being oppressed by the people on top. But God wants you to be free. He is going to remove the bands that are hanging on God's people so that they don't proclaim, awake, awake, go in through the what? Through the city. I will get together. Uh -huh. For that said the Lord, uh -huh. you have sold yourselves for naught. And it shall be redeemed without money. No money is needed. Uh -huh. For thus said the Lord God, My people went down aforetime into Egypt to sojourn there. Uh -huh. And the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Uh -huh. Now therefore, what have I here, said the Lord, right. that my people is taken away for naught. They that rule over them, make them to howl, Do you understand? said the Lord. They, th <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> They that rule over them, they are the ones who are blocking them from accessing what God has for them. They are not allowing the heritage of Jacob to the people. They are blocking that. Because we have seen, they don't want to feed from who? From the main Christ. They just want to, to behold him and to be called by his name. But not they don't want to eat his food. They don't want to what? To wear his apparel. So God is saying, those people who are who are oppressing his his children, they have put in hell over his people. And what? And my name continually every day is blasphemed. The name of God is blasphemed every day. Yeah. Uh huh. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Uh huh. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am He that doth speak. Behold, it is I. Do you understand? So God is, is, is the same way is continuing through Isaiah. He is going to deliver his people, but he is going to deliver them from off all these, these churches that we think are perfect. No, they are not. God is going to do himself a favor by putting the kingdom as an equalizer. And all the people have to be redeemed from there, from their churches, which are now will be called Babylon into the marvelous uh, kingdom of God. Let's hear the next verse. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith the Lord, thy God reigneth. That saith to Zion, Thy God reigneth. Thy, thy watchmen shall lift up the voice. With the voice together shall they sing. For they shall see eye, eye to, to eye, eye when, when the Lord, Lord shall, shall have bring again, again Zion. Zion. All together. So, what are we waiting? What is the culmination of this? We are waiting for the Lord to bring again Zion. And when God has bring again, brought again Zion, what, what, what are we to do? We are to flock. For Isaiah and Micah 4, uh, I want you to go to Micah 4, Micah 4 verse 8. Verse 8. And thou, O tower of the flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion, the kingdom shall come to the daughter of Jerusalem. Are we together? So we have seen the mother of us all, yeah? 
we are the daughters and children of Jerusalem. Now, the one thing that we should be eating is from the heritage of Jacob. The thing that comes from Jerusalem, that is the thing that we should be eating. What is it? The words from God. So what are these? He's saying here, uh, uh, Thou tower of flock, the stronghold of the daughter of Zion, unto thee shall it come, even the first dominion. What was the first dominion? It was the Edenic dominion. That God is promising that when the kingdom shall come, we shall have Eden as it was in Eden. Are we together? Uh -huh. Verse 2. But verse 1. Verse 1, sorry. Verse 1. Uh -huh. But in the last days it shall come to pass that the mountain of the, of the house of the Lord shall be established in the top of the mountains, and it shall be exalted above the hills, and people shall flow unto it. Uh -huh. And, and do you hear that? And people shall flow. When God has brought again Zion, do you see? People shall flow unto it. Do you see well, what happened in Noah's day? When God had finished building the ark, they flowed unto it. The people didn't, but the animals flowed unto it. Now, he's saying, in the last days, people shall flow unto who? Unto Zion. Yes, and verse, next verse. True. And many nations shall come and say, Come, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and to the house of the God of Jacob. And you will teach us of his ways, and walk in his paths. For the Lord shall go forth from Zion, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Amen. So when, did you see when Jerusalem was saying, Where, 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 who has, has, has brought me this? I have not, uh, I, I was buried, and I don't know where these children are coming from. Do you see where they are coming from? Nations shall flow unto Jerusalem. They will go to another nation and say, let's go, yeah? And go to the mountain of the Lord of hosts. We will walk in his what? In his paths, and the, he shall teach us his what? His ways. For the law and the word of God shall come from who? From Jerusalem. This thing has not yet happened, brethren. This thing is happening when God has, has put an equalizer. Yeah? He knows, oh, we love our churches. He knows that. We love our churches. And if there's something that will make us not go to, to heaven, is the churches. The churches will make sure you don't go. You don't listen. But when this call is coming, yeah, many nations shall go. How together? Uh, uh, I want you to read uh, uh, Nahum 1 verse 15. Verse 15. Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feasts, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Do you understand? The wicked do not go. Do you understand? So, what are we understanding, brethren? I know there's, there's a lot of verses that we have got, uh, put across. The wicked will not go yeah, to Zion. That's what we, we are hearing here. And I, I, I would like you to, as we finish it, Isaiah 35, on top of, of that, it says, and a and highway shall be there. Okay. Uh -huh. Isaiah 35, verse 3. And an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. Are we together? So, there will be a highway. I've, I've seen highways from countries. They have got big, massive highways. It's something that cannot be uh, missed by a naked eye. So, the people in our time, in the time of the, of, of, of the consolation, they will see a highway being made for the people of God to what? To walk in there. Out together going to where to Mount Zion yeah and if they go through that that way they are walking in the way of of holiness let's go uh -huh. the unclean shall not pass over it the unclean shall not pass over it but it shall be for those the wayfaring men though fools shall not err therein so the way then do you know when when people heard Noah preaching uh, uh, he were, uh, there is going to be rain and God has said these 60 cubits and this whatever cubits shall fit all the people it looked like, like a foolish idea but God is saying it will be the highway but though it appears full 
like foolishness. They will not err therein. Are we together? So come, brethren, let's walk into this highway. Uh -huh. No lion shall be there, uh -huh. nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. Uh -huh. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return, and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Do you see? So God is not saying, no, oh, uh, this highway is going to heaven. This highway, the ransomed, the redeemed, who, where are they redeemed? From their former bosses. Out together, they are redeemed from these people who put collar necks so that you don't move. But when they are redeemed, they shall walk with songs and gladness unto who? Unto Zion. You don't go, you don't walk to Zion, to, to heaven, you walk to Zion. Can you repeat that verse? Yes, uh, it shall not be found there, but the redeemed, it shall not be found there. But the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransomed of the Lord shall return. They are returning. So you don't return to heaven. You have never been there. You are returning to somewhere you have been. Are we together? Mm -hmm. Right? They shall return. And come to Zion with songs. And come to Zion with songs and... Everlasting joy upon their heads. Uh -huh. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Sorrow... And and cry shall what shall flee away. So this massive exodus that God is talking about, yeah, of people coming from Babylon into the ark of God, which is the kingdom. Can you surely miss this day, this event, the majestic event, the the, the 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 worrying thing that I always had is to realize when it is too late that actually Noah was right. When he was telling us that the water is going to come and, and flood the whole earth. Why not? Why gamble with life? God is, is so particular. Every verse from Jeremiah. We could have gone through Zechariah. Zechariah ain't saying, Oh, men from many nations shall come. Ten men shall take hold of one man who is a Jew. All these verses are saying one thing. And we choose to what? To blind our eyes god is not going to be very happy what is he going to be happy with is for us to know that there is a woman who is no he has been barren who is no one has ever thought of uh, of, of 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 talking about is mount zion heavenly jerusalem the holy spirit our mother whose name is after the jerusalem the name jerusalem is of the holy spirit that's why the, in, 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 in Revelation 20, uh, 22, 20, from 19, you see she is portrayed as a, a woman adorned for, for her husband. It's the Holy Spirit. Are we together? So what are we, are, are we, being saying, are we saying here? We are saying God has a, a, a heavenly Jerusalem and he's got this massive city that he has prepared for us to go into. When the time comes, for the call of Revelation 18, the loud cry for all the people to leave. Yeah? Because God has prepared the plugs to what? To, to, to deal with uh, all these women who are not, uh, 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 who do not want to get married to Christ. They just want his food. They don't want uh, to be married to Christ, to eat Christ's food. The statute and judgment which which Christ is giving he with Elijah in this last days. So the kingdom of God is going to be the equalizer. So there's not going to be all oh, anyone who say, Oh, our church didn't preach that. Yeah, it didn't preach that. But this call from Revelation 18 announcing the kingdom is going to be the equalizer. You have to be part of it, join the highway and walk it through. With God's people going to who? To Zion. Because at the end, we'll see in Revelation 14 verse 1. Lo, I see the Mount Zion, the lamp with him and 144,000. All together of all the tribes of Israel. So the 144,000 standing on Mount Zion, it's not in heaven. It's actually Mount Zion where they, Isaiah 35 say, they have walked singing gladness. All together. Can you repeat that verse? Where they are singing with gladness and joy. 35 verse 3. 
and then highway shall be there right and the way and it shall be called the way of holiness right the unclean shall not pass over it right but it shall be for those the wayfaring men though fools shall not err therein though fools it look like foolishness but they shall not err therein uh -huh. no lion shall be there no end ravenous beast shall go up thereon uh -huh. it shall not be found there but the redeemed shall walk there, and the ransom of the Lord shall return, uh -huh. and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Do you get it? With everlasting joys upon their heads. I want you to, uh, uh, sorry, I'll give you this verse, uh, Revelation 14, verse 1. I, I want you to, to hear what, uh, uh, what it is saying here. Revelations 14 verse 1 And I looked and lo a lamb stood on Mount Zion and with him an hundred and forty four thousand having his father's name written in their foreheads All together having the father's name written in their what? In their foreheads. Uh, verse 2 Verse 2 And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters Right. So he is, uh, this verse is a lot of people confused. So verse 1, it tells, And I looked and lo, a lamp stood on Mount Zion with 144,000, right? Having Father's name written on their what? On their foreheads. The next verse shows us where the 144,000 are, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> and I heard a voice from heaven. As the voice of many waters. So the voice is coming from heaven. So which means the 144,000 were what? On the okay. earth. And when he was looking, when John was looking at the 144,000 with Christ on Mount Zion, he's hearing the voice from where? From heaven. Otherwise, he would say, I looked in heaven and heavens were opened. I see 144,000. But he's seeing them on the earth. And then a voice comes from where? From heaven. Come together. Uh -huh. And as the voice of great thunder, sorry, and I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, and as, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. Uh -huh. And they sang as it were a new song before the throne, and before the four beasts and the elders. Uh -huh. And no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty four thousand which were redeemed from the earth out together so this as we see in revelation in, in isaiah 30, 35 he says the way of holiness they were redeemed what when they were walking in that way of holiness when they were redeemed and they were coming unto what unto mount zion so this is this the exact uh, 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 scripture that is showing us that in these last days god is not going to finish his work with a multitude of ministers who are not straight up with God, who are, 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 are defiled. Verse 4, he says, For these are not defiled with women. Can you read that one? Verse 4. Uh -huh. These are they which were not defiled with women. Do you understand? Those seven women that we were talking about, these were not defiled with these seven women, but they were def they were what? Uh -huh. For they are virgins. Uh -huh. These are they which follow the lamb with the so They follow goeth. the lamb with the so ever he goeth. Uh -huh. These were redeemed from among men. They were redeemed from among men. Being the first fruits unto God and to the lamb. Being the first fruits unto God and the lamb. So brethren, we are not talking of rocket science. Eh? This thing is going to happen in our time. Where God is going to what? Is going to redeem the 144,000. And these ones, they are going to do what is called the loud cry, yeah, of telling the people where the kingdom has been set. And it's going to be an, an equalizer for all flesh. Those who have heard, those who have not heard, this is the loud cry of the third angel's message to draw, draw people from where they are, from their former bosses, from their former oppressors, going back into the kingdom of God. So that's how God is going to do his work. Don't worry about people who say, oh, our church, our church that. No, there's going to be a time where every church, no matter whatever church, 
I'm not saying where I'm coming from is the perfect church. No, where we are going is where we will see the righteous people who are the first fruits. You know, when God is saying they are the first fruits, it means they are second fruits. You know, when when you take a literal harvest, when you take the first fruits, the things that are, 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 are <coughs> the the first grains that are harvested, that are ripened, you take them, them ones. It doesn't mean you have taken the whole field. No, it means that sample is the first fruits that God is saying. These are they which for which which follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth. And when they are taken, they are the ones now to tell us, Oh, come, brethren, the Lord is indwelling in here in Zion. The, the, the Mount Zion is the place where there is the inauguration of God's people. So when, when that happens, your feet should be found in Mount Zion. If you are found anywhere else, then you are reading the wrong tangent. May God bless us all. And may we know that it is high time that we have to look for, for, for the equalizing gospel that is going to bring us unto, unto Zion. And God is going to bless every soul that is going to be uh, part of this mighty movement who are going to walk in the holiness, in the way of holiness, this highway where everyone will see and and they have to walk into there. Uh, the, the, the last verse that I want is Isaiah, Isaiah 11 verse 15. Isaiah 11 verse 16. That's our last verse. Isaiah 11 verse 16. Verse 16. And they shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, which shall be left from Assyria. Sorry. Verse 16. And they shall be an highway for the remnant of his people, right. which shall be left from Assyria, like as it was to Israel in that day that he came up out of the land of Egypt. Amen. So God is saying, there shall be an highway. This is the last highway that God is going to give. The second exodus is the day is, is in the day when they came out of who? Out of Egypt. So this highway is only for the remnant. That's the most surprising thing. Because an highway should be for the multitude of people. But you see, God is saying it's for the remnant. A few people going in there. So if you are not part of this remnant, you are in some highways that God does not know, you have to join this highway. Join this highway and we'll be together with God's plan, God's purpose for this earth, and God's purpose for his people. This is what God intends to do with the world. And these are the intents of God. Yeah, when Christ shall sit here yeah, on the throne of glory and say, you have got to the light, you go to the right, you go to the left, you are the God, you are the, the sheep. Where is he going to do that in the air? No, he's going to do it here on Mount Zion. We should have gone through all the verses that will show us all the nations when they are coming and God is putting the nations on the left and the other on the right and say, you who have what? You have done my will. Go on and inherit the kingdom which was been prepared from the foundation of this earth. So it's not a, a, a something that we are just dreaming about. It's something that the Bible is backing up. And we know in this last time, God is going to bring the kingdom. And this kingdom is going to end all our questions, all our diversities. We know there's one God, one faith, one baptism, one God who is the father of all. He, who, how is he going to, to finish all that controversy? This great controversy, he is going to finish it by bringing his kingdom as he did in the day of Noah, bringing the ark. And everyone who didn't go in, it was to their damnation. It was their choice. God made sure that people knew what they are doing. Even in our time, you choose not to go into Mount Zion into Jerusalem. It is your own choice. It's not anyone. You know that I'm not going into this highway because I choose not to. But it is where God is going to have his remnant people and the kingdom which he had prepared from the foundation of the world. May God bless the reading of his word.